So we've seen that loading kits into instruments is pretty easy and pretty straightforward, and you can use the factory soundbank kits. But how about building your own kits? Well, it's also really straightforward and not something you should be daunted by. I think that if you can build your own kits, you're gonna get much more original sound. So let's take a little look at how you do that in say Kong or the Redrum. Um, for instance, let's load up Kong and we'll just do that by going to instruments. And this is a, a kit that comes loaded with Kong. It's the default kit. And there are a few default kits, actually there's sort of four in the list. Um, but this one's called the Kong kit. And it's gonna be the first one that you, um, that you experience when you load Kong up. But let's say you wanted to build your own. If you right click anywhere in Kong, you can initialize the patch and this completely wipes it. Now you see it just says drum one, drum two, drum three, and there's nothing loaded and it won't make any sound. But if we wanted to build, build our own kit, we just click on a, on a pad, so say pad one, and then we're just gonna go to load drum patch. And earlier you saw that I've got my own drum hits area here. Um, let's go to kicks and load that up. And it's that simple to load your own drum, drum sample. And if we open up, we can see that an NN Nano sampler has automatically been made for that pad. And it's not something you have to worry about. If you're very basic and a complete Kong beginner, you can go ahead and use it without even looking at that show drum and effect section. Obviously, I would advise it. It's great to have a look and see what's going on under the hood and understand that it's a sampler that's playing back for that pad. Um, but if you like, you can go ahead and build the whole kit in this fashion. Um, so we can load up some snares and we'll go back to audio samples or drum hits. And we'll go to dance mega drums kits 909. And we could maybe load a clap in this position. And we're already starting to build our own kit. Now you can continue like this and build the entire kit up and you can name each, um, each area. So we can call this clap you can call it whatever you like, uh, kick one. And the beauty of it is that you can even change the, uh, the sound once you've named that pad. So just by clicking in this area here, you, as long as you're within that folder, um, you can just change it to whatever you want. And again, with the clap, we could change it to a hi-hat or a bass drum or a snare drum. Here we go. To anything you like. And it's that easy. And once you've finished, you can save the patch. Sorry, wrong button. You can save the, um, the kit. And we'll save that to, say, the desktop. And we'll call it kit one. And that's loadable at any point. So you can start saving folders of kits and uh, recall them at any point you like. And to be honest with you, loading um, kits and making kits in the redrum is just as simple. Again, it's gonna load with a default kit. But if we wanna initialize it, you right click, we're gonna go initialize patch. And again, it's completely wiped. We're gonna hit load in each slot and we can go to kick drums, load our own kick. And there's a little play button just here. Again, within that folder, we can change the sound and we can just keep moving and keep building up our kits in exactly the same way. And we can start building our patterns immediately in the redrum. So you can see it's really easy to build your own kits and it's definitely not something you should shy away from and try and move away from using just the factory kits and start building your own from square one. Next up, I'm gonna show you something quite interesting and very different from using these sample playback devices uh, for our beats, and that's using raw audio and raw audio drum hits and samples right from within the sequencer on audio track. 